you are live. <laughs> <laughs> we are live. Yes. I'm just going to so, press refresh. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> oh, yes, we are. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so um, I'm Sara from Top of the Paper Team. Okay. And I'm here today with uh, Lou Sims. She's trying. <laughs> She's trying to check Facebook. <laughs> okay, Lou, everything all right? Yeah, I, I had to mute myself on my PC because I could hear us twice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes, I know it, it seems a little bit strange uh, the first time. Don't worry. So uh, I read on Facebook that you are a little bit nervous about this first live show. <laughs> Just a little bit. I've, I've made ah. myself a huge big coffee just to help. <laughs> oh, you go with coffee. I go with Prosecco. No, <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding. It's just white tea. <laughs> but um, consider that uh, this is my this is the first time for me in front of the camera. I'm Italian, so when I speak English, uh, I always think to be like Don Vito Corleone in The Godfather. <laughs> but I'm relaxed because I'm at home and I'm wearing a jumpsuit. So I think that everything will be. So uh, do you want to explain something about the project we are going oh, to Oh, right. Okay. What we're going to do today is we're going to make a background. But I want to deliberately make, and this is going to sound awful, but I want to make a horrible background. And um, one that we would probably throw in the bin because we would go, oh, gosh, that looks ugly. But I want to show a way that we can make an ugly background, but actually then use it to make a beautiful project. She yes. says, fingers okay. crossed. Yes, I, I, I think it would be perfect because uh, I've uh, seen the first, uh, the first project uh, and I, I'm in love for this style. Uh, I can wait to learn something new. So... Um, if you are ready to go, uh, I leave you some minutes to, to flip your camera. And cool. in the meantime, I can share uh, with people uh, um, a, a little preview of the latest winter collections by Ciao Bella Paper. Okay? I close. Bye. See you soon. Okay, now we are ready. Um, I can see you, Lou, and I can see uh, this beautiful project. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. Um, um, I, I, I can leave you alone to work, but I'm always here for everything, <laughs> okay? I'm just moving the cable of my heat gun out of the way because that's it. Right, I'm just going to move, and it doesn't want to now. Yeah, so don't, don't worry. Point, isn't it? Do it go. <laughs> right, okay, so yeah, we're going to have a go at, if we don't get both finished, the background is the same. It's just the composition of the finished card that will look a little bit different, that's all. Well, let's move my coffee, though, before I knock that over. Right, so let's make a start. I'm going to use um, Distress Crayons. But you can actually use whatever you want. This could be done with inks. It could be done with watercolors. 
you know, absolutely, you know, everything that you want it to be done with. I'm just checking. The, so, I like I said, I want to make uh, an ugly background. I know that sounds a horrible thing to say, doesn't it? And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to randomly put colour down. And I've chosen um, colours that will work together. So that, that, that was one plan in my head. So if we were making a background, we wouldn't deliberately or we wouldn't, you know, try and use colours that didn't complement each other. So what have I got? I've got candied apple, carved pumpkin, and I should have squeezed lemonade. Yes. So as I said, I'm just going to randomly put it down. And with a crayon, you can put the, the more pressure you put down with a distress crayon, the more colour you add. So that's, again, is personal preference. So. And I'm, I'm not overly thinking it. I do have to twist my crayons down because if I don't, I always seem to catch them. So I'm just going to put a bit of the squeeze lemonade in just to add my highlight colour. There we go. And then just because I want a little bit of contrast, I want just something, a few areas of darkness, I'm just going to use the pumice stone in different places. go there we are so that is roughly going to be my background as is and then all i'm just going to do is i'm just going to actually i think i'll use the other brush i'm just now because they're water soluble i'm just going to blend out the colors and i'm just going to start one color at a time i'm not trying to make this perfect blends I just want to make this like a scribble page and we're just going to do it like this and bring it down so the more water you put on obviously the slightly more diluted the color will be oh, I've just seen some familiar faces pop up hi Joan hi Tom and I'm just going to do the same now with the carved pumpkin. And I'm not at the moment going to try and blend any of the colours in. I'm going for, well, I'm not going for anything neat. I'm just going for, let's see what happens when, if you just watered them out. And then I just want to do the final bit is I just want to water out some of the squeezed lemonade. because so this is like my highlight areas. So there's, I'm not doing any skillful background because sometimes we don't need to. And if you're in a hurry, you just go for it. And then finally, I do want to just do some of the pumice stone because I, I want to have a few darker areas as, as a contrast as well because I've got lots of bright colour on there. And, and then I'm just going to blend one or two of the different bits in. And as I said, the goal is not to make a perfect background because we all have days where, you know, we plan in our heads that we want to make certain types of background and then it just doesn't happen. And, and then what do you do with it? Do you keep it? Do you throw it away? But there's always ways to use it so that actually let's move those out of the way is going to be my background nothing more exciting than that so i'm just going to heat heat set this and all i want to do is i need to dry it so i can do the next phase and when you look at it it's well it, it looks like i've just drawn with crayons on a page blending the bit <laughs> thanks Patricia but um it, it looks as just that like I just scribbled on a page I haven't gone you know I haven't tried to blend colors in together um and I think sometimes we all forget that we all have a starting point and we forget those crafters that all have to start somewhere. 
and I, and I think it's important, you know, to show everybody that everything can, you know, be beautiful if you want it to be. Right. I'm just making sure it's dry enough so I can do the next phase. And I'm just drying both sides so my paper will go slightly flat. And there we go. Now, Chabella's got this most beautiful, beautiful stencil. It's called Star Six. See, and, um, those who don't know me know I love to doodle. Um, and these sort of stencils work for me because uh, I can doodle in them as well. And it's like, yay. What I wanted to do was I want to take the same crayons and I just want to add to the background. I'm just going to make my card a bit flatter, otherwise it will bug me. And I'm just going to start with something like the candied apple. And I'm just going to put some little bits of the crayon in places. And I'm not, again, not going to be overly precious. And I then want to add some water to my sponge. Now, this is a, a sponge that I haven't cleaned, so it'll be interesting to see what colours come about. And I put water on there because I know that the crayons are soluble. And then what I want to do is I just want to pick up some of the colour and move it around. And where there isn't much colour, it will act like a bleaching effect as well. And I will create a subtle background with the stars and the, the crayons that are on there. So it's going to be a really, I'll try to lift up the camera. So it's a, going to be a really, really subtle background using the, the actual stencil. And I'm going to carry on with, because I still, I can still feel this is wet. So I'm just going to carry on and just pull a little bit more out. And what I want to then do is I'm just going to put some of the crayon actually on my blending sponge. You could do your, use your finger if you wanted to, you know, go with what makes you, you know, works for you. And then I'm just going to now this time around, it will be a little bit darker because I put the color actually on the sponge. So the stencil and the stars will show just a little bit more. So as you can see, if I do around the lower edges there, you can see that with the crayon on there, I'm creating like a watercolour effect using the stencil and a sponge. But it just creates a totally different different look altogether. I'm not going for too precise. I'm just uh, filling gaps where I want to. As I said, I'm not, I wanted to try and make a background that when you look at it, you it doesn't seem appealing to the eye. I hope that makes sense. Right. So the stencil now, because this is all waterproof crayon, I can put in the wash afterwards. I'm going to grab my lid there. Right. So that's all I want to do with the crayon. So I'm just going to move them out of the way. So I need to get another new tin. I, if you didn't guess, I do rather love my distressed crayons. <laughs> so I'm just going to tuck my lid in. Otherwise, what will happen is they'll fall on the floor and I'll step on one and... So let's just move those out of the way. Right. So we've got our background like that. And it's actually, you know, it does. It still looks like a, a riot, an absolute mess on the page. And I just want to now just do one or two things to it before um, we go to the next stage. And I'm going to use the, the chemical reaction set. I'm going to be honest and say I'm not a great person in cleaning my set and my stamps. Um, I start out with good intentions, but it oh, doesn't always work that way, she says. Right, so I've got a, one of the symbols here, which is the oxygen, and I want to grab my inks. I'm going to move my projects out of the way. And I want to just randomly stamp on with this oxygen symbol with the O. And I'm going to do the second generation as well. I don't want to waste the ink. Let's do a few more. You've got the ink that's on there. So using up the ink to me is my idea of cleaning a stamp. I know that's not 
the same for everybody, but it is for me. And I'm going to take the little other one we've got in there, which is um, the C, which stands for carbon. And I'm going to do exactly the same. I'm just going to put my lids on my ink because it's quite humid here. And we'll just put... I'm going... I've gone for like a, a vermilion and orangey sort of colour to match in. So they stand out, but they also match in as well. Yeah. There we go. So that's just using those two. I can put that away so I don't lose it. And then we've got this beautiful chain molecules. Oh, that looks super cool stamped in a die cut shape. Really, really does. And I'm using a grey. Now, this isn't going to show up um, spectacularly, but all I'm doing is I'm just adding layers to the background. And it's going to be really subtle. I'll lift it up to the camera once I've done a few more so you can see what I'm doing. I'll just... And I, I don't want it to be to stand out, but I just... I'm using the grey because it, then it has a relationship with the pumice stone that I added in the background. So, I mean, I will carry on, but you can see that that's it. So it's very subtle and I've got the other um, element stamps in there. This is the only thing waiting for Facebook to catch up with you to see if you can all see it, but I hope you can. Um, and that's all I want to do for the moment is just add that detail in. And we're going to do... Sorry, I'm going to hack... Do one there. And let's do one in here. Tom, what the, the Chow Bella stamps? I believe they are, um, but I'm not 100% Sarah's online. I mean, Sarah could probably let you know where the best place is, you know, to get um, the different stamps from. If not, Tom, what I'll do is I will find out for you. Um, drop me a message because, um, you know, I might need reminding. So we've got that's our background. Let's just put the lid on there. And the background um, is, as you can see, it still looks messy. It, it doesn't look like it's all cohesive. And, and that, as I said, that was a deliberate plan. So I'm just going to move this out of the way. So what, what I do then, when I've got a background like this, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a, a guillotine. And I'm just going to now chop the background up. Let's move my stamp block. And I'm just going to make them different shapes and sizes. And we have a nice pile of when you cut them all up, um just put them one on top of each other. Don't think about you know keeping them in the strips they were, it doesn't really matter. Oh, thank you for answering Tom. Tom, they work superb on the jelly plate. Um, the stamp set that I fell in love with in, on the jelly plate were the stamps that were linked to the Delta collection. They just look super cool. Really, really do look super, super cool. So this now is that horrible background. And what we've done is we've put it into smaller portions that suddenly it now doesn't look quite so bad. It doesn't look... Um, like that big splodgy mess because we've broken all that up. We've taken bits of it away. We can still see where the colour was, but we've taken that scary bit away. And then the next thing, I'm just going to put them there. I do need these stamps, but we'll just move them for the moment. What I've done is, I these are my base layers. And I'm going to try and get two done. I'm not going to promise, 
but I will definitely get one background. Um, and then what I do is I actually will take these layers and I will stick them down to create another background. But because I'm making it mosaic-like, it will take on a totally different look. Um, and it looks then, you know, the background then, you know, doesn't look uniform, but does. I know that sounds a really weird way of saying it. Now, I'm just going to eat the edges, and I'm using the grey ink again. I want the edges to... I want each piece to stand out, but I don't want it to be um, as harsh as a black edge. I, I mean, I could have gone round it in the, the red, would have looked equally as cool. Um, but because I stamped in the grey, I want to try and go for that first. Hi, Charmaine. So... And I'm just going to put just one on the side there. And I've got another one here. Let's have a think. I'm going to put... Now, this is where I will mix and match things around. And this is the part that my husband hates. My husband doesn't do random. Uh, if it's not in a nice, linear, straightforward pattern, he, he, he can't cope with that. Right, so I've got a couple of pieces there. And then I just want a, a contrast of the darker piece in there. So I'm going to chop this down. So don't be afraid to chop them down into even smaller sizes than you originally had. So... I've got a darker edge there, so that's cool. And I, like I said, I'm just inking them because I want the edges to stand out, but I don't want it to be um, so much so that they they become the predominant feature. Yeah, let's go do something like that. Now I'm rushing my gluing. I would take a little bit more precise time. If it's easier, you could always use double-sided sheets. Now, that one there looks cool. So this is going to go on this page. We've got this one here. There we go. So I'm just doing exactly the same again so now the background is, is becoming another background so, and, and we will tie everything in together in a moment now this you i've chosen these colors if you're going to do this and these aren't your favorite colors go with the colors that you know really work for you so let's have a think. Um, oh, that piece looks like it was destined to be there. So let's put that there. Oh, that's a, even though it's random, I've still got to have the uh, the O facing the right way. I just want to turn that over and just make sure some of these pieces are stuck down there we go i'm just building up from there and then i've got a darker piece here that i'm going to put there Patricia, actually using your papers would work exactly the same. And I do do that. I um, Any strips of papers I have left, I stick down um, a sheet of double-sided paper and I will, you know, create montages that way. Um, including, and you know, you always, always seem to have one or two little bits of alphabet letters left over and adding those on top as well. And then you've created yourself another background paper that works for you. Right, let's, we haven't got a dark piece over here. I'm going to add a dark piece there. That's 
as I said, I'm covering the background, but I am just want... Let me get... I'm not covering the backgrounds. I'm inking the edges. So I want the edges to stand out, but not not shout at you as such. So let's have a look. I'm going to use let's put that one there, but it needs to be trimmed just a little bit. I'm not going to get the guillotine out for that bit. This is also good if you've got um, toppers or little bits of toppers left over where you've cut out different elements to create your own collage sheets as well. It works brilliantly like that. So, quite like the contrast there. And even though I... If it's easier, think um, and you know, and you just want to work in one particular size, do that. But I mean, it's great though when you can just chop them up to suit the size that you want to work in. And I'm sorry, I forgot to. My camera was down for landscape, but as soon as I rotated it round, it went back to portrait. So I do apologise. Okay, so I've got that bit there. Oh, look at that. Anyone think I planned it? I didn't. But you would have thought I had. So I should put that bit in there like that. So it doesn't take long to create. Um... Hi, Cal. I know you're a big Chow Bella fan. <laughs> So it doesn't take long to create the backgrounds. Yes, it's a little bit, um, you know, faffy, if for want of a better description. I'm going to put that in there, and then I'm going to do a little sip. Um, but it's also quite satisfying as well, because I will use my jelly plate, and I will create lots on my jelly plate and use stamps and things like that. Um, and you can always overprint with backgrounds, but sometimes when you put a lot of effort into a background and then it doesn't quite work as you want it to, there's always that thing, do you put it in the bin? What do you do? I mean, personally, I just walk away from it and we'll get it out another day. But we all, we all create differently. Right, so let's see. Oh, I've got those stars there. They would look quite... Oh, look, that, let's put them on there. They would look quite cool. So from an A4 sheet, I'm going to get two backgrounds and I will probably get quite a bit left over that if I wanted to do a matching tag or even, um, you know, make put decoration on an envelope on a card, that would work as well. We've got that there. Right, so I've just got a few more bits. I just want to grab quite like the idea of that chemical symbol being there and as I said I'm, I'm not overthinking the inking on the edges now when I made my card I did spend a little bit more attention to my gluing but as I want to try and do two backgrounds I just wanted to because I can always while I do the next sort of stamping I can always put them under a book or something so that going there, I've just got to put a little sliver there. So I'm just going to concentrate on this one at the moment and see. Oh, look. You know, I'm, it's, it's like I planned all this to fit and I didn't. <laughs> I promise. There we go. Trim that bit down there. And I want a lighter bit on here. So let's go for that one. I want it to be a little bit of a contrast to the brightness of the red or the deepness of the red. Okay, so let's put 
put that down there. Yeah, Joan, I, backgrounds can be used for anything. I mean, collage like this or cut them up. It's amazing as well if you die cut um, a background you don't like up, whether it's into circles, rectangles, and it becomes the base layer. It suddenly takes on a totally new vibe, a new look. Right, so let's pin that there. And we're going to then start filling up this piece up here. And I want to light a bit up here as well. Sorry, I'm looking through the little bits I've got left. Actually, I quite like that bit. Now you could trim these down before you stuck them down. I tend to stick mine and then any, as you saw, cut away. If the edge is still um, not looking flat in any way, shape or form, I... Uh, I can always still put it through the trimmer afterwards. So if you hear any knocking noises, it's my dog trying to get in, bless him. Right, so I've got this little bit here and this bit over here, which we will do. So I just need to trim a bit down. I want a light bit, I think. Uh, oh, that's perfect. Just grab a pen. In normal circumstances, I would use a pencil, but for speed, I want to be able to see where I'm going. Okay. I've gone quiet because I was concentrating then. Oh, brilliant. I'm just gonna ink those edges as well, even the smaller ones, a bit of glue. But there we go. So that's that background all completed. And from that sheet of scribbles, it's it's taken on a totally different look. Now, I did have a thin slice. Oh, there it is. I want to go. Actually, I don't like that. Sorry. Does anybody else faff or take ages just for something as silly as a little piece like that? That's too complimentary. That doesn't look too bad. Let's see if that piece will work. Oh, brilliant. And I will even ink the edges of something as thin as this as well, because I don't know, in my head, it makes it feel, I make it, if I didn't, I'd feel like it was standing out, even though probably it wasn't at all. All right, so I'll just trim that a little bit away. I'm just going to move my glue for the moment because otherwise I'll knock it over. So I've got two backgrounds and I would keep probably, you know, these bits. And I've got all of those bits left that I could probably make an A6 background. So this one is a six by six inch and this is a matte layer for um, an A6 card. So I've probably got enough little bits there that I could probably do another A6 background um you know if i wanted to so suddenly we've changed that horrible background that i started out with and it was horrible into something that looks something different altogether so i'm just going to put those little bits there because sadly i will keep them because you never know and all i just want to do is with the same ink is i just want to ink around the edges And I'll do this card as well. Okay. So there my background done. And I just want to do one more thing on them. And I just now just want to tie them in just a little bit else. Hi, Fiona. How are you? I'm just going to stamp this on an excess piece of paper. And the only reason I'm doing that is I re-inked it. And I don't know how wet it is or whether I put enough ink on it. Oh, no, that's cool. That's cool. 
So now using the same stamp, that, that beautiful chain stamp that I did in grey, I'm now just going to bring it in in different areas in the black so it goes over. some of the different panels so it looks it, it ties some of the panels in together and then I'm just going to do I'm going to turn it around that way hi Gail Thanks, Joanna. Right, so I just want to get rid of some of the excess ink that's on my stamp. As I said, that's what I do to clean my stamps. So now I've just stamped that detail on, and because I've gone over all the other patterns, it helps make it look like it all merges back into one. Well, in my head, it does. It feels that way. Um, I suppose as long as my head's happy, that's what counts. Right, and I'm going to do exactly the same on the smaller panel. There you go. And let's just do one more. And I'm just going to get rid of some of the ink on here. Because why waste it? But from left, I might as well use it up on here as well. There we go. So that now I've created because I've in my head anyhow I've created all the different layers on the background, and by over stamping all the different panels, it just looks like suddenly it's become one piece again. So suddenly the background has taken on a different look altogether. It's a beautiful stamp, Fiona. It's from the um, Chow Bella Chain Reaction. Right, I'm just going to wipe my fingers because the next bit I want to have clean fingers for. So those now are going to be the backgrounds on my card. So that will sit on my card like that. So I might as well glue that down. Well, the stamp set is, is really cool. So, so that's now going to be my background and I've gone for a white border. It would look totally different if I had gone for um, a black border. Let's see if I've got a piece of black to show you the name. So if I suddenly put the background on black compared to putting it on the white, it, it takes a totally different look. Um, again, sort of thing. It does have a bit of a wood-like look. Yeah, Tom, I, I hadn't really thought about it like that. But then suddenly changing on the black, it takes a, a different look. So if you wanted your background to stand out more, you, you could put it on the black. I want my images to be the focal point, so I'm just going to keep mine onto a light piece of card. doesn't mean though, that I couldn't technically double mount it and put it with a thin layer of back afterwards. Let's put you down there. But as I want the other images in the stamp set to stand out. Um, I will just put these on here. But now for so the background, so the backgrounds have changed again. So they've gone slightly differently again and we've got them all merging together so they're my two backgrounds put the lid on you i'm going to put them to one side to dry and we're going to do the next part right so i do have to tidy up a little bit as i go along i am messy but i'm tidy messy <laughs> if that makes sense <laughs> but you, you're not messy lou you have to see my desk oh, your really? desk is not messy it's very clear <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know. I haven't been able to hear you before. Sorry. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. Uh, I wrote to the people uh, on chat. 
there's not a problem. Okay, cool. Right, I'm going to use a stamp platform for this only for, to be quite frank. And let's do it this way. I'm going to use, now in the chemical reaction step, sorry, like I said, I maybe should have cleaned mine. We get this beautiful flask image. And it works, um, housekeeping moment, yeah. <laughs> and, and we've got this beautiful flask. And I want to use that first to be part of the layering point. So, as I said, I do have me. Maybe I could give my stamps a little bit of a birthday afterwards. I'm not going to promise something that's not going, you know, that I'm probably not going to keep to, if I'm honest. Shows they're used and well loved. One of the other reasons I'm using my stamp platform as well, as I said, I've just re-inked my ink pad. And I, I'm i not sure if I was over generous with the ink or, ah, I should say, could have probably done with putting some more on, but never mind. One of the benefits of a stamp platform. But I have been good and stamped it out anyhow. Your desk is messy, Charmaine. Fiona, um... These are the Chow Bella stamps. Sarah's online. Um, I think Sarah said to Tom that she, that she would send messages or um, say where you could get them from. So, um, I can send you a message to you and to Tom and uh, giving you some reference to, to buy our stamps in the UK. Okay. Oh, that'd be cool. Thanks, Sarah. <laughs> You're welcome. Right, okay, so that is that image there. I think I need to put more ink in my ink block. So it's a, it's a really, really, you know, clear. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, like, jars. You've got, like, a little specimen bell, and then you've got, like, um, like a pipette that's got been turned upside down. Gosh, look at me sounding all technical. Um, I'm not, by the way. Um, and it's a really beautiful image. I mean, I can see this one being great for Halloween. If you did your backgrounds in greens and purples, and then you did this with lots of different um, lotions and potions inside. So I've done that. But what I have done, because I wanted to use it, I've actually stamped mine and because I want to use them so they're cut out. So I've taken mine and I've, I've cut them out. So but I just wanted to show you how beautiful the image looks stamped out. That is my old ink pad, I Charmaine. I know I did um, ink it again, but I obviously didn't put enough ink on the reinker. So we've got... But it is a really beautiful commanding image. But one, why I've got this out here, I want to stamp two more of the elements. Isn't it? You always plan, and then all the good plans just go to pop. And we get two um, different sentiments in this set, which are really cool. One says, I drink coffee periodically. That doesn't work for myself and Charmaine's in here. So that um, tidy crafters have something to hide. Um, I don't think so. I don't you don't think, think so? so. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think so. Um, my my house is a total mess, so uh, I've got nothing to hide. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> oh, I'm not saying I'm any good at housework. I tell you what, no way at all. So that's a <laughs> That's the necessary evil. <laughs> okay. But we're in England, so I can I can say something like this because I know you you like to have fun with. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, no, uh, sorry. I am a I'm a tidy, messy crafter. Sorry, okay. although there's although there's going to be probably one or two people who will radically disagree. So <laughs> you always know uh, where to find the things. Even if maybe someone else uh, could think that you are not so tidy. Uh, yeah, if you came into my craft space and you asked me where something was, I could probably tell you exactly where to find it. Okay, this is the most important thing. <laughs> <laughs> right, so we've got I drink and then coffee. So it's got like the C-O-F-E. So that's like the, the coban, the fluorine and the iron. But put all the chemical symbols together and you get the coffee. Yay! It's and then we've got falling in love is a chemical reaction, right? This ink pad is doing my head in. 
I'm going to go and get another one. Otherwise, we'll be here all night. All right, okay, that will do. There we go, that's better. Yes. So I'll just move it up so you can see. So we've got the, the chemical symbols, but when you put them all together, they spell out coffee. But take the words away and cut them up. You've still got separate chemical symbols to use as decoration. And then we've got falling in love is a chemical reaction. And you could colour these bits in with a micron pen or if you've got like a jelly roll, you know, in red or different colours. I just think that's quite cool. Different. I love it when you can take a stamp set and always add your own little personal touches to it as well. Right. So like that stamp set is that stamp is going away before I get frustrated with it. Right, so I think I've already cut some out and I've already, I want I want to use these, so I'm going to keep these. Um, I've got a second one here because I didn't know if I wanted to layer these up. Well, in fact, if I'm honest, I've got a third one. <laughs> I didn't know if I wanted to layer them up. Um, to... <laughs> oh, I should laugh. Me. And I just want to grab some, I'm going to grab some different coloured Echoline pens. I love my Echolines. Um, they just work for me. They're just my little go-to. And I think I want a yellow as well. My poor hubby is currently organising inside of my car. Oh, Tom. Oh, label maker. Yeah, yeah. Now you've got to have a label maker. Um, if I'm on it. I won't show you my box with what my, my different labels. You've got to have a label maker. I'm going to be honest and say, look, all my boxes are labelled as well, Tom. See? <laughs> right, okay, let's get back to colouring this image and not get distracted, Louise. <laughs> uh, right, I'm just going to pull my chair in. I'm going to sit down to colour. Okay. Send him to mine. <laughs> right, so we've got all these beautiful images. Now, you could colour them all in, or you could colour bits of them in, and that's what I'm going to do. I want to just colour um, bits in, because I don't want them to look full. I want them to, to appear that there's only so much liquid in there. And I'm going to be honest, and I'm not worried, but technically that would show red through it. Because um, I, what I want to do is I want to blend the colour over it so it looks like it's got ghosting through that way. Right, that's not too big a paintbrush. Let's grab my water. And I'm not going to be overly precise, so I'm going to colour that little bit of pipette bit in. And... I'm just going to put a little bit on the bottom there because I want it a little bit darker there. That will bug me if I don't do that. There we go. And because these are your stamps and, you know, you can use them how you want, colour them how you want. I said I'm a very selfish colour. I colour mine how I want to colour. So I'm just going to do... A little bit of the blue and in this instance i'm not i'm just gonna put the blue down where where the stamp has denoted some shadow in places i will clean my brush there my craft room <laughs> it's being a teacher in a path eye. yeah possibly claire yeah Probably is because obviously when you were teaching, you needed to know where the resources were straight away, and because obviously children look for all of two seconds, and if they don't see it, that means they don't, you know, it's not there. So probably, right? So I've got that one there, and then let's have a think. I'm going to go for let's go for a little bit of the orange here. And the one thing I love about, I mean, you, we, I could spend a lot more time and detail, you know, going over um, 
these if you know if you wanted to color them up a little bit more you could do but then if you didn't want to color them at all you didn't have to also if you didn't you could always stamp this onto um, backing paper or if you've got um, foil you can always say about a message <laughs> that's a good idea right i'm just going to put a little bit more water in here because i want this a little bit more translucent there we go it's better and let's have a little bit of green I want to bring in a touch of the blue at the bottom there. We've got this bit here. And as I said, these, these stamps, you could colour them in. The only thing I haven't done with these stamps, and I really must actually do that, I, would love, I must um, stamp them and use... Um, different gilding flakes so i think that would look cool um or embossing powders in here like silvers and golds i think that would look really good and then finally let's i want to have a bit of a gray so this i mean like i said also i think this set here if you did them in greens and yellows um and the um you know, like you can get the, um, the fluffy stuff, you have the snow and things like that, and you put them inside the cylinders. That would look really cool. Like um, it's a chemical reaction, which I suppose is appropriate for a stamp name. <laughs> I really like the way you use colors because uh, oh. I think it's not so easy to uh, use many different colors in the same project, but uh, everything is very well balanced, I think. Oh, thank you. <laughs> now, I do like colour. I think, well, as you can tell probably from my background um, we made earlier, that the brighter the colour, yeah. I think it's easier sometimes to use more colours than less. Yeah. Because oh. um, you don't notice then if you make a mistake, because there's loads of colours already on there. So I'm just going to put something on the lid there. Because that's got like, the look of a perfume atomizer, and I just want to add a little bit of the yellow in there. There we go. Right, I'm not sure if I'm going to use you, but we'll do it that way. So that there is like the finished, and it's simple as that that we're going to do with it. Now, I do want to put some glossy accents on it in just in places, but I will do that once I've um, stuck everything down in place. So if I grab this here, so this is now going to sit along there. And what I have done, I thought I should, is I've been really good and I've stamped already some of these out now you could stamp them out in colored ink if you wanted to or i I've, I've got a tendency to stamp in black and white because then that gives me the choice of um you know changing all the different colors so like this one here like i said you've got the coffee here suddenly you know when you cut them up and i muddle them around you've now got chemical symbols that you can use that don't spell coffee anymore if you if you merge them in amongst everything else so Let's, I'm going to put this one on here and I'm just going to grab some foam pads. And I just want to just do some of the foam pads on the back. And we're going to place this. Yeah, no, that would look good um, on acetate with colour behind. That'd look really good, Patricia. Um, or, you know, like um, foils as well. So I'm going to actually now I'm going to put this back on so we can make this this in two different ways. So I can show it in two different ways quickly. Right. We've got this bit here. I'm just going to trim these down. And oh. Huh, trim it. Oh, it's over there. It's there. And I've got the eye drink. I just want to cut that down. And while I'm here, I'm just going to cut this down. Okay. 
here. Look, I'm even tidying up. I'm even putting the uh, bits back in the bin. I want the eye drink. Now, I would cut that a little bit differently, but that's going to go up there. That's called a lesson in stop rushing and concentrate. But I can show you my finished card anyhow, so you can see from there. Okay. So I've got this on my phone pads. I want to show you one or two different ways to, to actually use the set. Now, like I said, I've that I would stamp a little bit better or cut out a little bit. So I've got eye drink and I've got my the pet there and then I've got my coffee and I would keep all this together I'm going to trim so I'm just going to put all my rubbish to one side otherwise I will get lost with what I'm using and what I'm going to throw away so I've got my eye drink and then I've got my coffee which would sit on there and then finally, like my periodically. Now, personally for me, it would be I drink coffee all the time. So this probably bit wouldn't come in. So this bit would go there. So I'm just going to move that rubbish out of the way. So when the card looks finished, every morning I spell, <laughs> I think I'm made of coffee some mornings, Patricia. So when the card looks finished, but this from there, all I've done is like I've added glossy accents to all inside these areas here. Now, I haven't colored this one up as much as I've colored that one. So you can do as much or as little coloring as you want. And then so I've put the glossy accents in the coffee bit here. And then where I did some of the extra stamping, I've put some of the glossy accents in there. So where I've got in my background, let's move you, I've added some of the glossy accents inside that stamp. So that, you know, creates that card there. Um, and it's just like a really quick, effective way to do it, if that makes sense. Ooh, sorry, I'll keep this because I will actually make another one. But the other thing I wanted to show you with it is if I grab the other background. Yeah, I've got now two backgrounds to, to make with something else. <laughs> so this is the other square background. And what I've done is with that one is exactly the same. I had these here. And I've got 3D foam and I've got falling is a love is a chemical reaction. And what I did with around the falling in love is a chemical reaction is I just took my watercolor pens. One of the benefits of a mat. And I'm just going to bring in some of the color. I'm very much into watercolouring because I'm a lazy colourer and it's quick. And I just want to add a little bit of the yellow. Sorry, Sarah, were you going to say something? Okay. I was reading for the people <laughs> for the comments. And uh, um, Chairman, um, she wrote, I, I, I thought you, sorry, I thought you said spill block. <laughs> <laughs> I'll spill it a lot now. <laughs> yeah. So, the Charmaine's a real coffee drinker, Sarah. A real coffee drinker. Yeah, um, I, I drink a lot of coffee. <laughs> mm. Not only tea. And uh, I need yeah. one now because <laughs> it is the end of the week. But it, of the day, not of the week. Um, I need a coffee, yeah. Uh, I adore this project. Now I want to to try to remake it. Oh, brilliant! So with the with this one here, all I've done is now where I stamp these out is I've just where I've taken those. I'm just now going to put them around and about and put some of the little chemical reactions and little symbols around. And then I would chop that one down there, and we could have another one sitting there that could be now do carbon because I've got the oxygen on the background. The, so we've got the, all those together. So when, a lot of, of movement and something. It, it is more interesting in, in this way, yeah. I think. So when it when it's finished, so that that's exactly the same layout. 
so all I've done there is now I've just I've done exactly the same with the glossy accent and I've again um and I've added sequins sequins are my secret bling okay very beautiful um, and then I've just then when with some of the leftover papers I just got a heart punch and just layered them all up so the card if I, oh, if I lift it up sorry if it's not close enough um, and I've just layered up, these are the leftover papers. So you, you can use it in two different ways um, it, with them. But I just wanted to, and then I've got, if I've got time, I've got another two quick ways, but I've already made them. Is that all right? <laughs> <laughs> well. yeah, yeah. You, you are very precise because uh, I, I told you, okay, we have to find the project that lasts one hour, one hour, 15 minutes, and this is the first time that I find uh, a teacher that uh, <laughs> is so well organized that <laughs> she works in one hour. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I did the backgrounds. Um, obviously, the backgrounds made tonight was mainly rectangular or square. And the main reason I did that is speed. You can make these sort of backgrounds a lot quicker. But if you feel equally as confident and you can think about your die cuts. So, for example, I've done exactly the same oh. background. Beautiful, this. I did it on a die cut heart. So, if I put the heart there, I've done it on a die cut heart. So, I can now put my whoops, put my image going across the top as we had before. I would add glossy accents and then falling in love is a chemical reaction. And whereas all the and I can add all my little symbols around and about. And I so I can create another card that way, but. That's exactly the same technique as I've just done now, but I've just done it on a heart die cut and in slightly different colours. So if you feel braver, you can do it that way. And then I thought, why not? Because I was making a mess. Mm. I've done exactly the same in a hexagon. Let's turn it the right way around. So have a think of your die cut shapes that you've got. And, you know, once you've gone from doing like a square or a rectangular background and you feel a little bit more confident, start looking at all the other different shapes that you can create and this is exactly the same background technique as i did as you can see scribbles and stamping on and you can then change it again and it changes and it changes again the totally the look of the stamp set by the different ty um, different type of background you use on top of it it is a very smart technique because um it is fast and uh, in the beginning you had just to make some scribbles on on paper yeah. so uh you don't uh, don't have to be scared when you try and yeah. uh, the final result is amazing i love it <laughs> yeah. but yeah so, did, so what i will do is i will make up the extra backgrounds you know into cards so you can see you know how it works by using the same technique on the different backgrounds and i'll I'll post all the different pictures. But the idea is, you know, I think who was it who said it was it earlier? Was it um, Patricia said, you know, you could do the similar technique with scraps of your paper, Chabella paper pad, you've got your leftover. But um, as I wanted to use stamps, I've gone ahead and used stamps. So well, I hope that was a, okay, a little bit of, bit of fun, okay. as it were. <laughs> so, um, okay, do, do you want to come back with us? Yes, okay, cool. I'll turn my camera on if you give me two seconds. Okay, uh, I closed your camera and uh, just a second. We are all alone waiting for uh, Lucy's. And sorry for my bad English. I hope you can understand me. For uh, all information about uh, our stamps, I will send you some private message to, to find uh, uh, the right reference in, uh, in UK. Oh, Lou is back. <laughs> Hi, <Luke>. welcome back <laughs> so thanks a lot uh i have fun since the beginning uh it is a very very beautiful project and it's something new for Chaubella because we started as paper design producers and mm. uh, now we make stamps and uh, i think we miss your style because it is colorful and so british I'm very happy about this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. But it's brilliant to create with and just let your imagination run riot, you know. 
stamp yeah. everything out and just cut it out and then just play around with composition design yes i i agree with you because um i think this is uh, the real essence of uh, our journal mixed media and mm. things like this I, I think you 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 need to be free to create uh, mm. without fear and uh, this is the best example <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, good. I'm pleased you enjoyed it. <laughs> okay. People really like this lesson. Oh, I read many comments. <laughs> mm, and uh, they are not my parents. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm Italian, they're not my parents. These uh, are true comments. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Thank you. Like okay. I said, I'll make up the other two backgrounds into cards and I'll post the pictures. Very good. Very good. And we will share uh, them. With, uh, with the public and about this live show um, I will uh, uh, upgrade it on uh, Ciao Bella Paper uh, YouTube channel so mm -hmm. uh, if everybody wants to follow us uh, on YouTube you will find many many tutorials uh, and we will make other live show in several languages uh, tomorrow I've got a, a live show in uh, Russian and uh, yeah it is a problem for me <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. Mm, uh, yes, I, I will drink Prosecco, I think. Um. <laughs> okay, so Lou, uh, thanks a lot. No, thank you. And uh, next time we will find something new uh, because we, we really have fun with you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.